Well, it's one of the fine dining capitals of the world, but New York restaurants are about to have one less item on their menus. The city passing a ban on the sale of foie gras, made from the livers of the enlarged livers of force-fed ducks and geese. Animal rights activists say the process is painful and cruel. Foie gras producers, on the other hand, say they'll sue to block this bill, which is set to come into effect in three years. Producers in California tried to uh, overturn a similar ban in 2012, but were defeated when the Supreme Court refused to hear their appeal. Well, of course, a very contentious issue. There are very different opinions on this ban uh, in New York. And to give us both sides, let's, uh, we've got Matthew Dominguez, a policy advisor for Voters for Animal Rights, and Sergio uh, Savaria, from the, he's the president of La Belle Farmers, producers of foie gras. Hello to you both. Uh, Matthew, I'll just start with you first. It would seem like a victory then for, for your cause. I mean, it really is a landmark victory here in New York City, but also for animals around the world. Uh, what we know is New York has a long tradition of standing up for those who are at our mercy. And I can think of no animals that deserve more of a protection uh, than the ducks used in the foie gras industry. I mean, Sergio, you know, speaking and hearing your story, for you, this, this, is, this is about more than perhaps just the production of foie gras. It's played a big part in your story uh, getting to where you are now. Yes, it saved my life. I'm from El Salvador, and uh, this is the only way that I was able to stay in the United States and uh, become an attorney, and it's the only way for many people to do the same thing. And we treat the ducks in that manner that we do, which is not what's portrayed in the media and it's not what's shown to the council. And we beg the council to come take a look at us, and no one came from the New York City Council. So I guess, Matthew, on that point then, what would you say to people, producers like you know, Sergio, for whom this will have an impact, not just on their livelihoods, but also it's been a big part of their life? Well, I would say the, the impact that they're claiming that this would make is just not founded in facts. Uh, in fact, what we do know is that they are exaggerating that they would be going out of business if this law, when this law takes effect. Um, in fact, what we do know is only 30% of their business, according to their own testimony at the hearing, uh, is produced, or only 30% of their businesses in New York City. And of that 30%, only is foie gras. And so you're talking about only about 9 to 10% of their business that's going to be affected and in three years. And frankly, if in over the course of three years, 10% of their business is what shuts them down, then they're going to probably have to look at their business practices a little bit more. But at the end of the day, this is about cruelty to animals. And anybody who watches the videos and anybody who sees the way that these animals are treated, one thing comes to mind is this is the definition of cruelty. Shoving a pipe down a bird's throat and intentionally enlarging its liver up to 10 times its normal size and diseasing that liver is the definition of cruelty. If you did it to a dog or a cat in New York City, you'd be prosecuted for animal cruelty. And we believe that ducks deserve the same level of protection. And we're incredibly, incredibly happy that the city council agreed with us by a majority of 42 to 6. I mean, Sergio, um, the definition of cruelty, Matthew says there. I mean, what, what do you say to that? I beg to differ, and he doesn't know what cruelty is. As a child, I had a gun put in my throat and told that I was going to be shot. And I watched my mother get beaten by gorillas. So don't tell me what cruelty is. And if feeding a duck is cruelty, I'm sorry. You have a very sad perception and you have a first world problem because you come to my world and you will see what cruelty is. And I invite you to come to my world and I will take you personally so you can see people being treated like that. People that get that opportunity to be here because of these farms, because we fight for them, because I became an immigration attorney because I've helped over 1,500 people. And to your thing about the business lying about its income, it, it is one third. It is one third of the business. But you also have California, which is another third. So that's 50,000 a week that we're losing plus New York City. So it is not fake. None of this is fake. It may be something that you feel strong about, but you do not know what cruelty is if you believe that that is cruelty. And you have not been to my farm. Come to my farm. I will walk you through it. Well, Matthew, would you take up an offer like that? I mean, obviously, you can see here, I think, both of you, that there are really strong feelings on both sides. I mean, it seems that this is a very difficult... What would you say to people, Matthew? First of all, just finally, if I might, what would you say to people to convince them that this is the right decision, this is the right decision, and it isn't going to be a bad decision for people like Sergio and others? 
Well, at the end of the day, I don't need to, to persuade them that this is the right decision. A poll showed that 81 percent of New York uh, New York City voters supported the ban on the sale of foie gras. Over 50 nonprofits, the most reputable animal protection organizations in the country, supported this bill. Over 100 restaurants, 42 council members, after hearing both sides of the story, voted in favor of this. And I will tell you, my heart goes out to immigrants and folks that have to make a living. But at the end of the day, Animal cruelty is something that we do not accept in our society, and it's something that we do not want to have on the menus here in New York City. And this bill is about animal cruelty. And what we encourage people to do in the foie gras industry is transition their business. I know that LaBelle Farms in Hudson Valley, you guys serve many other products than foie gras. Move away from this barbaric, this delicacy that is disgusting and people simply do not want. Go into other forms of agriculture that people are willing to accept. I didn't ban foie gras in New York City. The New York City Council did after hearing from thousands and thousands and thousands of people who were in support of it. Sergio, finally then, will you be making a transition or will you be you know, joining the fight against this ban? First of all, the poll is uh, deceptive from the beginning. It goes off saying that the disease is liver. And we have documentation where they tried to petition the USDA to declare the foie gras diseased product, and they haven't because the USDA is at our plant every single day stamping our product as a wholesome product. So we're not diseased, so your poll makes no sense because you start with a premise that is defective. Second, we do try everything. We do everything possible to step out into other realms. First of all, other things, I grow quail. The quail are not unique. I cannot petition people with quail. This is such a unique product because there's only three in, New in the United States, two in New York, that I can actually petition somebody under this farm. So we do, we are always working. And if you came and you saw, we don't have that metal tube that they portrayed. We have a small rubber tube that we use. We do so many things different. We're not in cages, we're in open pens. I wish that you or the council, at least after passing this legislation, if they would have made, I would have picked them up. I would have picked them up and brought them to our farm. Well, I mean, speaking to you both, really a divisive if issue. I... Thank you both for sharing, for sharing your perspective.